you're looking for an amazing tropical getaway, look no further than Costa Rica. Costa Rica is an incredible country with one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. Whether you're into surfing, fishing, zip lining, waterfalls, or just want to relax on a quiet beach, there's something for everyone. We recently spent one week in Guanacaste, Costa Rica, and wanted to share our experience with you by making this travel vlog. My small family and I put together this video to give you a taste of what it's like to spend a week in Costa Rica in summarized form. These are a few of our key highlights. Hey everyone, my name is Kyle and I'm the owner of ViaTravelers.com. In this video, I'm going to take you on a trip to one of my favorite places in the world, Costa Rica. If you're looking for an amazing tropical getaway, look no further than this place. I'll show you a summarized version from sunsets on the beach, laid back beach towns, lofts. So pack your bags and come with me on a journey. Please be sure to subscribe to the Via Travelers YouTube channel by clicking that shiny red button below. We're posting as many vlogs and travel guides about destinations we love around the world. If you love to travel as much as us, you won't want to miss the next update. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to sharing more posts about this stunning country. Please feel free to leave comments below if you have any questions or suggestions for other vlogs that we should make. Let's get into it. When we landed in Costa Rica, we stayed at the Bay of Papagayo at a vacation rental called the Jaguar Village. We checked in, relaxed, got a lay of the land. It had been nine years since we've been to Costa Rica, so we wanted to take a chance to enjoy the stunning views, the amazing sunset, and after a long day of traveling, have a night to relax so we could hit the first day off right. Our first day in Costa Rica, we decided to keep it simple from Papagayo and we made it down to the small town of Coco or Playa del Coco, which is sort of like a hybrid expat tourist community, a small town, beachy town, where there's plenty of good little restaurants, bars, tourist shops, a great beach, plenty of excursions that you can take from there. We stop at this bar called Coco Nuts which is sort of a cheeky expat beach town bar uh, that had swings. What's not to love about swings? So we hung out there, had some amazing rum drinks. People watched and enjoyed the 90 degree weather, which is far much different than negative 10 in Minnesota. On our next day in Costa Rica, we went to Poza Los Coyotes. Poza Los Coyotes is just outside of Liberia. It's about an hour drive from the Bay of Papagayo and it's an emerald color river that is born from the Rincón de la Vieja via Volcano. It has waterfalls, pools, and it's a perfect spot to cool off in that unbelievable Guanacaste heat. This is a great hidden gem that's close to Liberia in Liberia Airport. If you're flying into that region and Guanacaste in general, be sure to have this on your list as a good stopover spot. It's not overly crowded, it's a great waterfall, and it's not too touristy where you'll have to pay you know, some form of uh, adventure park or some excursion. We just brought our rental car. Following our visit from Puzzles Coyotes, we decided to take the excursion down to Las Catalinas, which is a man-made built town that's completely car-free. Many people suggest that we visit this town due to its similarities to many European villages or even those iconic Amalfi Coast towns or even the south of France. And so we had to pay a visit and see what this was all about. Everyone had told us to come here from the moment we stepped foot on the street uh, to pick up our rental car. They said, you have to come, you have to come. It's supposed to be like a European style area where there's no cars allowed. So we came and checked it out and the architecture is pretty cool. I like it. Each building is very different from the next. So you can walk around a corner and see some with ivy and it's very pretty. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it European though. There, I was expecting to be a town square. There's didn't see any of that here. And I was also expecting there to be some more shops and restaurants and bars and things like that, which they're still developing it, so maybe that will come. Overall, I'd say this is a great spot if you like a resort town or something similar to a Vale type vibe. But if you're looking for the true Costa Rican culture, 
there's probably better places than it. The town itself is interesting. It's situated perfectly amongst a enclave, if you will, along the coast on the Pacific side of Costa Rica. It's extremely hard to get to though. The drive is one of the most interesting drives I've ever done in my life. We even had to drive through a river, which I was excited about. Alex and the baby, not so much. And even in our small Nissan Versa, we braved it two, not once, but two times going in and going out. We knew that we were gonna be in for a treat on our way to Las Catalinas, being that the road is called the Monkey Trail, believe it or not. And that's right by the Congo Trail, which is a great location for wildlife sightings and those classic Costa Rica views. The drive is just over an hour to get to Las Catalinas from the Bay of Papagayo. Along the way, we passed the Diamante Eco Park. So on the way back, we just had to pay a visit to see those iconic monkeys and sloths. So we're at the Diamante Eco Adventure Park. After heading back from Las Catalinas, it's uh, conveniently located in the middle of Las Catalinas and Coco. So it's one of the most popular little eco sanctuary, zip line, horseback riding, ATV and the whole thing. Uh, we're just gonna see some animals here today. Uh, so we're gonna hop on this little shuttle and go see what, uh, see what they have. Diamante at the reception. Where it's a nice little lookout here. And there's a zip liner. The zip line is actually one of the largest or the longest in uh, Costa Rica. But it comes up from the up, way up top of the hill where I pointed out and then through here and down all the way. There's wires all the way through here that you can see. What do you think about, what do you think so far here? Uh, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. It actually feels like you're walking through the jungle. I mean, low key jungle, right? But, but it's pretty cool. Right, Sophie? What do you think of him? He's a little monkey. Interesting little fellow, huh? <laughs> yeah, very interesting. All right, we're at the sloth den here. Not sure if you can see them, but it basically looks like the morning after a uh, house party where everyone's just sleeping in random places. Yeah, you have your buddy Greg on the couch. Huh? You have your buddy Greg on the couch. Yeah, your buddy Greg and on the couch and Todd on the ceiling. All right, made it to Tamarindo. Settled in. And checked in, I think a coconut hit on the uh, roof here. But settled into the Capitan Suizo, which is Swiss in Spanish. And ready to explore the town and the beach.
closer. Okay. Here in Tamarindo. Very surfer vibes. Walking down this interesting alley. Um, we spent a bunch of time at the beach. The tide is coming in actually, it's January, so there's a uh, um, good surf vibes. It's actually the best month of the year to surf here. A lot of action in Tamarindo, a lot of more like surfer vibes. Good cocktails and good bars everywhere. Yes. Except for if you go a two for one place. Don't go there. Good, yeah. We're sitting here on the beach in Tamarindo watching the sunset. Absolutely phenomenal. It's gone down now. But we just saw this boat over here and we had to share. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but there's got to be about, I don't know, 30 people on this boat and they keep trying to go and coming back and, and they, they just they just can't get away. One thing you had to love too is before we even got to the beach is like everyone started gravitating towards this for the sunset and like as we approach people are just like grabbing their spots, sitting, waiting for it to happen and like this is the tail end of it but when we started coming to the beach it was everyone was heading toward the towards this area so yeah grab happens. a spot it um, there's something unique about sim you know sunsets in tamarindo that you can't really uh replicate anywhere else no it's unreal unreal so we watched the sunset and i gave my thoughts let's get uh out some thoughts uh, I thought it was pretty insane. It was so cool to see everybody running over here and sitting down and posting up. It felt like uh, like Bondle Park where there's all these people coming together to come and you know sit, and have a beer, and watch the sunset. Check out the peaceful. check out the Bondle Park uh, video. Yes, that too. But yeah, it felt I, I liked it here. It was very beautiful. The waves too are getting bigger and bigger as the night goes on, as the tide comes in. And Seashells are being left on the beach. After visiting a few of these spots, we spent the last couple of days enjoying Playa Hermosa, Playa Panama, and the rest of the Bay of Papagayo. If you're not a big traveler, Playa Hermosa might be one of the best beaches in Costa Rica that you've ever heard of. It's absolutely stunning and has everything from long stretches of beaches to rocky cliffs, tide pools, and even a few caves. In addition to great snorkeling, scuba diving, the people here are extremely friendly. Playa Panama is a super laid back beach town in Guanacaste. While it's not known for much other than surfing and having great sunsets, we really enjoyed our time there with the locals. I would say that even though Playa Amorosa is a better beach, Playa Panama is the best place to get a taste of what Costa Rica's culture and people are like. During this trip, we also got to see some incredible sunsets in multiple locations. We'll show you a glimpse of them here. While at Playa Amorosa, one day we watched sunset over the Bay of Papagayo. It's something that's pretty hard to beat. In fact, our vacation rental had a view every single day but we made sure to watch the sunset each night we were there. After a week in Costa Rica, we have to say that it was definitely worth the visit and I was so glad that we went back after nine years of being there. The beaches are beautiful, the people are friendly, and there's plenty of things to do. We would recommend spending some time here if you get the chance, whether you're looking for a relaxing vacation or an adventure-filled trip. Thanks for joining us on our Costa Rican journey. Pura Vida. If you like learning a bit about how we travel, please subscribe and join us on our journey around the world. Thanks for watching and cheers.